Hello everyone. So for this Christmas card, I am actually showing the wedding invites that have been highly, highly requested. Um, yeah, they are Christmas themed because this is for a winter wedding. And I had talked about these a fair bit, um, just on my blog, Facebook page, random things. Um, these kind of consumed my life for a while. And I finally, finally am sitting down and editing the video I took of them. Um, I ended up making 235 of these. It's a very big wedding <laughs> and it's for a very close friend. I normally would, I would just say no, I just would not do this for anyone else. But for them, I said I would do this. So I designed these wedding invites and then went into massive mass production mode. And the original video, I, or the original set of invites, um, when I did just over 200 of them, I didn't film at all. I wasn't even going to share them. It was... I didn't have the time and it just, it became such a huge process and I just, I couldn't do it. But then I needed to make more because they forgot certain people needed to send up more or whatever. So I needed to make about 25 more. So that part I filmed, which is the exact same as what I did. So basically I'm just showing you guys how I mass produce. And the first thing I do, um, even before all of this, is I design them, obviously. We agree on, you know, the color scheme, the layout, um, everything. I get all that hammered out and then I figure out all the supplies we need and then I get into the actual making of. So I started out with the bases and you saw there that I scored the full sheets of cardstock before I even cut them and then I use my um, tonic guillotine trimmer which works fabulously for cutting. You know I, can, I usually cut about only about two sheets of cardstock at a time with this. Sometimes you can cut more. I'm using heavyweight, my favorite thing is wild cherry cardstock here, so I only cut two sheets at a time because otherwise it's just way too, it won't cut smoothly. So I scored then cut all my card bases, which were top folding A2 size cards. So four and a quarter by five and a half when they're folded. And then I'm using for these invites, I used a ton of die cuts. And again, I would not normally do this for anyone. Um, and looking back now, I probably never would have done this anyway, doing this many. If you're doing, say, like, under 150 to 75 invites, these would be great. You wouldn't want to kill yourself at the end of it. But I, it was just, ended up being so much finicky work with all these de die cuts and details. And that it just took a ton of hours. Like, they turned out gorgeous, and I was really pleased with them in the end. But they were a ton of work. So... Again, with mass producing, I do everything at once. So I'm doing all my cutting at once. Um, I cut my card bases and then I'm cutting all the different pieces of cardstock that I'm going to be running through my machine with the different dies. So the flags type, the flag type die is from the pierced, or no, from the Blueprints 13 pack from My Favorite Things. And I'd actually got a second pack of those dies so that I had two of them just to make things go smoother. So that's die cut in red. The black I used um, the pierced square stacks dynamics from my favorite things. And same thing, I cut down the cardstock, figured out how many I could fit per piece, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, the whipped cream cardstock, I'm using a small die from Simon Says Stamp. It's the Kate Snowflake die. And again, I got an, a second one of that. Um, with the amount I was making, I actually should have had like about four of them because <laughs> it was a lot. I did, I forget how many, I think I did over a thousand passes through my die cut machine altogether to do all the die cutting for these well over that. It was insane. So yeah, I did that. And then for the large snowflake, this is the Simon Says Stamp. Um, this is the Eliza Snowflake, really, really pretty. And I've got this silver sparkle paper that I got at Michael's. Um, that was another thing. It took several trips to Michael's to get the amount of silver glitter paper I needed because I'd buy out their stock. Um, in the end, I needed, it was well over a dozen sheets. I'm not even sure, but my Michaels doesn't carry very much of that stuff. So I was able to get it all in a couple um, runs. And so then once I've got all my cardstock cut down, I started die cutting. And I literally spent days die cutting. <laughs> and I did it all at once again. So I started with um, the main red piece here. Just running it through with the flag dies from the Blueprints 13 set. And I'm using a Vagabond, which I haven't shown in videos before. Some people have seen it in the background of other videos. I actually got the Vagabond to do these invites because I knew I was going to be doing so much die cutting. Um, I'll give a quick review of it. Love the Vagabond. Totally wish I had got this thing years ago. I always was kind of put off by the price. Um, I got it on sale through a friend in the States. Um, shipping no matter what to Canada for these things is not cheap. I think it was at least $40 for shipping. 
but oh, it saved my life. If I had had to manually like crank the handle on, you know, a big shot or anything else for all these, I would have gone insane. It would just have been nuts. Like it was crazy enough just doing these die cuts. So the Vegabond, so glad I thought I had and got one of these. It was worth it. And I use it all the time now. Um, I use the Big Shot in videos just because it's more convenient. But for everything else, I'm always using the Vegabond. And for these invites, it was a lifesaver. So I did all my die cutting. Um, all Again, I just do everything in stages. So I did all the red pieces and then I go on to do all the black pieces. Um, the Pierce Square stacks, I didn't get a second set. I should have. Um, it just, again, would have just made things go faster, but it was fine. Um, another thing you have to take into consideration when you're doing massive mass production like this and doing, say, lots of die cutting is you will pro pretty much destroy at least one set of cutting plates. You can see that one from doing the previous couple hundred. I completely destroyed a pair of cutting plates. In fact, I think that altogether I ended up ruining four because of the, just the amount of die cutting I did and it was nuts. So um, I did all the black squares. And then the snowflakes, it really got finicky. Um, I really had to fiddle around with sandwich stacks and um, just layers and everything to get clean cuts. Um, I don't know, I found it really frustrating. These dies work perfectly well on their own, but be, I think just because I was using so many um, and running it through so many times, like my cutting plates, everything was getting warped and then, um, you know, thinning out different things like that. So I had a bit of trouble with the snowflakes, something this intricate. Again, because they were for a close friend, um, I struggled through it. There were some nights I was almost in tears over just how frustrating it was, but I figured it all out in the end and was able to get, um, yeah, it was over 400 die cuts and like over 450 die cut snowflakes I ended up doing. So it was a lot, <laughs> but I used my multi-purpose platform and I used um, one of one or even two of MFT's metal shims and cutting plates and anything to make it work. It was nuts and sometimes having to go back and forth. The biggest difficulty was this silver glitter paper from Michaels. That stuff was a pain to die cut. Sometimes it would work, other times I would spend so much time trying to get these snowflakes, you know, because they're so intricate out of that paper. Oh, it was nuts. But when they were done, oh, they were so pretty. You'll see, of course, at the end. But yeah, I did everything in stages. So after the massive amount of die cutting, I went back to these red die cut pieces and I had got a huge roll of my favorite things, silver, or not my favorite things, um, the May Arts silver cord. Um, again, I'd kind of, when I designed the card, I kind of measured and figured out how much, um, like how many inches it would take to do one. And then you multiply that by, you know, 200 or however many you're doing. And a full roll of this stuff was more than enough to cover um, all of the invites I did. And I still have actually like a lifetime supply of silver cord left. So really nice. And yeah, this was just so I just held it and I wrapped around three times and then just taped it with my acid-free scotch tape. My original design, I was going to tie them in a bow, you know, it was going to be pretty, but <laughs> I thought better of that after all the die cutting that I was not going to tie 200 and, you know, 30 some bows. <laughs> it would have been nuts. So, and plus with cord, it's kind of finicky about holding the bow. So I was worried that if I did all these bows and then they, you know, come undone in the envelopes and then the mailing and then, you know, people open it and it's got to look a certain way. So really crazy. Um, and then the next stage... I had a whipped cream cardstock mat on the front of the cards that all the die cuts are going to over. So that goes back to cutting again. So I trimmed them all down to just slightly smaller than the A2 size cards. So it was like five and a quarter by four inches, something like that. Um, I could have die cut that. I have one of the blueprints dies from MFT again, but that I did not after all the die cutting I did. It was way quicker to just um, cut the cardstock with my guillotine. Um, trimmer. This one, it says Stampin' Up. I've had this for years. I've actually shown it in like a video of forever ago about my favorite um, paper trimmers. I've had this thing forever. It has blunt edges so you don't like slice your fingers off when you use it, but it's worked fine all these years. It's made by Tonic, um, so I can probably link to something very similar because they made it for Stampin' Up. So it doesn't come in this color anymore. It's I think orange and gray, something like that. But great cutter. I like it for mass production so you're not using up a regular like paper trimmer like the little Fiskars one with the little cutting blades not fun so 
Now I'm getting to the inside pieces, which have all the info. These look a little funny here because I whited out any of the like personal data because I'm not going to share my friends like every little tidbit here. So I just had extra pieces and then whited them out so I could use them just for the video. Um, I designed all of that just using um, the text option in Photoshop. So I took a bit of fiddling and then I formatted it so that I could fit four on a piece of cardstock. And then I actually took it down to um, our local print shop where like I emailed them the file and then had them print it all off for me because I wanted it in color. So that was actually a way cheaper option than fiddling around with my printer, everything else. And then I brought it home and was able to trim them down. And then for these stamps, they're from the Simon Says Stamp Holiday Envelope Sentiment Set. I just got it for the snowflakes because they matched um, the snowflakes that I used on the front of the card. So I stamped the insides of all of the invites with the snowflake stamps and um, silver ink. And then while I was at it, I ended up stamping all the envelopes, which is just an extra. It was, wasn't even something we dis I discussed with my friends before doing the invites. I just thought it doesn't take very long and it just gives it that little extra something, you know, because the envelope's all pretty and has some silver ink on it. So I stamped all the envelopes. And then once all that was done, all the ink was dry, all the pieces were die cut, cut, whatever, I started adhering everything. So again, I do it all in stages. So I, I started by adhering all of the insides first, got that done, folded all the cards because I'd already scored at the very beginning. So that took like two seconds, folded all the cards and then adhered the whipped cream piece to the outside, got that all done for all of the invites. And then I went on to start adhering all of the die cuts. So with these, the layout started with the black pierced square die cut. And again, it was kind of just an extra touch. People that don't, well, like 99.9% .9 of the people that got these invites don't, you know, craft or stamp like this. So those pierced square, you can't see it in the videos, but you can see them in real life. You know how it's got all the pierced edge. It just gave it that extra something, which took no extra effort because it's all part of the die. So things like that are just kind of nice and you don't normally see on invites. So I adhered that and then adhered um, this flag piece that I had wrapped the silver cord around. So that took a little more effort to adhere just because the cord gave it a bit more dimension, but got those adhered for all the adhering. I used my Tombow Mono Multi Glue. That is my go-to adhesive, especially for mass producing because it's cheap. And I think I went through about four, four or five bottles. I think four bottles of it um, to do all these invites. So a little bit goes um, a long way with that stuff. So once that was all adhered, then it's time to adhere all the snowflakes. So I adhered all the silver snowflakes and then I adhered the little whipped cream ones. I had kept them stored in little um, containers um, so that I didn't lose them while I was doing this whole process and just applied adhesive to the very center of them let the edges stick out a little bit didn't worry about that it just gave it some extra dimension and of course contributed to the whole handmade look and that's all well, I'll say that's all there was to it but this was <laughs> this was a lot of effort and a lot of hours they were in the end, like I said, I was really pleased with them. And of course, my friend and her soon-to-be husband absolutely loved them, which was the most important part. Um, yeah, it was quite the process. I highly doubt I will ever do anything like this again. I don't mind mass produ producing things. Just this was, this was a lot. <laughs> Doing over, yeah, I think I'll, yeah, I did 235, I think is how many I made. And it was... I'm not even sure. I wrote down somewhere how many hours, you know, that went into them. It was a lot, but um, yeah, it just, it was just the time to make them all. So once everything was adhered, they were all done and I put them with their envelopes and delivered them to my friends and they were able to mail them out to everyone. And it's going to be a, a very gorgeous winter wedding. As always, I will post info below in the description box with a link to my blog post, which will have all the info as well. Um, as well as um, links to supplies used and any other little tidbits I can add to the blog post. So if you're interested, check it out below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.